Hey Fly Tires, welcome back. I'm Matt, and thank you for stopping by the channel. Now I've got another classic pattern for you today. This one is in both Mary Orvis Marbury's favorite flies and their histories from 1892, and Ray Bergman's Trout from 1938. This one is called The Beauty. Now I wish I could dig up some history on this, but there just wasn't anything out there at all on it. Now Marbury did have a couple of sentences about it, but basically all she said was, that it's a favorite fly of a couple of successful fishermen. And Bergman didn't say anything at all, but he did have the recipe for it. Despite it not having any history, it's really a pretty cool fly. And from 1892 standards, it's a little bit fancy for an old winged wet fly. I'd say the defining characteristics of this one are that its wing and tail are from a primary flight feather of a guinea. Lots of flies back then were tied with just, you know, duck quills for the wings, but this one uses guinea, so it's a little bit mottled, looks kind of cool. I don't think it's too hard to tie. I think you're gonna like it. Let's give it a shot. There it is, Mary Orvis Marbury's Beauty. Now, the only thing real unique about this is kind of that guinea wing and tail. I'm gonna tie this on a size 12. It's a 1X long standard wet fly hook, 1X strong. And I'm using 12 aught thread. You could use a 70 denier or 8 aught for sure. But go ahead and lay a base down all the way to the start of the bend. Okay, now we're gonna wrap a tag on the tinsel. So I'm using a small Danville's Mylar, size 16 and 18. We want the silver showing, so catch it in with the silver side toward the hook. I'll just wrap it with one wrap and then pull it a little closer. All right, two wraps, I've got it secure. Now what I'll do here, that is where I'm going to catch it off, but I'm gonna just put three big wraps to move my thread out of the way. Now I'm gonna wrap this. So silver side out, and I'm gonna take it probably four or five wraps to get maybe three millimeters of a tag here. Okay, now that you got it back, just put tighter, closer wraps going back up. These are the ones that will be visible. Okay, and I probably brought it up one farther than I needed. That'll be covered by the tail. So I can back off these three thread wraps, and now my thread is right there where I want to catch this in. So catching this tinsel with two fairly tight wraps right there. Now we can go ahead and snip this off. Now the next component is tail. So just take a few fibers from your guinea, a flight feather, now, if they're sticking together, sort of like the barbules do, I'll just put it in my fingers and roll it. It might break up some of these, so you'll get, you know, get them broken up a little bit. Now, in Ray Bergman's book, he had them tied in pretty tight, so they were canned up. Marbury did not. I, I kind of like them pointing up and a little bit long, so I'm going to go right there. We'll put a wrap and then let's see how that's going to look get them situated i think that looks good right there with them uh, pointing up a little bit now i'm going to leave this in here just take some loose wraps up here these fibers are going to be my underbody okay now when you get that up front go ahead and snip this off And let's take the rest of that tinsel we just had, we just used for the tag. I'm gonna catch it in right here, and then just trap it on my side of the hook going back, trying to keep the body smooth. All the way back to where that tail starts. Maybe just a, a hair in front of it so we can put this first dubbing wrap right behind it. So put a little wax on your thread. And if you've got gray or a light gray floss, you could use that. That's what Bergman called for, but Marbury's, it was a thicker dubbed body. So I'm gonna just put on, kind of split the difference, I guess, and put a thin layer of Superfine. So dub this on here fairly tight. 
maybe three inches or so. Let's see. That's a little bit more. See if we can make it work. And it still might take two applications to really get it dubbed all the way up to the front. So let's give it a shot here. And I'll need to back this up one more. So my first wrap that's laying dubbing will be behind the that tinsel. Okay, that's gonna be fine. Might need to tighten it up just a little bit more. Yeah, that's a little bit fuzzier than I like. Okay, that'll be fine right there. Go ahead and make a smooth body all the way up to the eye. Mm, I think I want just a little bit more. Okay, that's fine. It's not a perfectly smooth body, but we might be able to take care of some of that with this tinsel. That's gonna annoy me. Let me go ahead and snip that rogue bunch of super fine out. Okay, now just wrap your tinsel, evenly spaced, fairly open wraps all the way up to the eye. Okay, two wraps to catch this off. Now we got a little bit of a brown hackle, or black hackle, I mean. So I'm gonna use Starling. Just, just something small, it's gonna be black. Don't worry about that white tip, it's, we're not gonna catch it in that far. So I'm just going to back my thread up one little bit right there. See, two or three wraps to catch this in. That should be fine right there. Now let's just wrap this. Two or three turns will give you plenty. I'm using this new Stonfo. See this new hackle pliers right here? These are pretty nifty and they do a pretty good job when you have the tiny, tiny little feathers like this. So you just catch it in like that. And just, this feather's not stiff. It's very pliable, but it's not real strong. So you can't put a whole lot of torque on it. Or you will break it. So one wrap right in front of the other. And that is two right there. I think this feather too is going to be fine. And I just broke it. So when that happens, just try again. Okay. That's one complete wrap. Now let's get our second one in. Okay. Two thread wraps to catch this off. And I'm going to go ahead and snip this before I release it out of the hackle pliers. It just makes it a little bit easier sometimes. So it looks a little bit unwieldy right now, but don't worry. We're gonna get this cleaned up in a jiffy. So just a few wraps right here to give me a little bit of a base where we're gonna put this wing. Don't want any sticking forward, but that's gonna look fine. It's just kind of a, an old school soft hackle right there. But what really makes this fly cool, take a couple of slips from your guinea feather. Natural guinea looks best, gray. Take slips from your left and right. Right here, I've got them back to back. Just get them lined up a little better. Try to keep the tips lined up if you can. And tie this on like your, your winged wet flies. Measure your, your length, make sure your thread's hanging where you want the back of your head to be. And then just pinch it pretty tightly right here with your material hand. Hold it firm against the top of that hook and do a pinch wrap, but pull down firm, but slowly as you kind of move it forward. Now you can take your second wrap and check your position. So 
I like the shape of it, but I think I might be just a little twisted. Yes, a little twisted right there. So before I put any more securing wraps, I'm going to just give it a little twist right here and then hold it right there while I take a couple wraps back. And now, still a little bit twisted, but you know what? I'm gonna to try to fix that. So I'm gonna back these wraps off and give it a, a spin. That's a little better, yeah. So a few locking wraps right here and it shouldn't go anywhere on you. Well, that's not perfect. But it's good enough for government work. Let's go ahead and snip off the front of this and then build our head. So get this as close as you can get it. I'm gonna push these up with my fingernails. Just helps smooth out this head right here. Okay, I didn't bury them all, but I think we're good enough to whip finish this and move on. Four or five turns right there. Poke my scissors through. And the beauty is done. So that's it, my friends. I appreciate you watching. Y'all take care, and we'll see you next time. All right, everybody, I'm about to do the drawing for the Montana Mongoose Vice giveaway. We got 68 entries this time. I will scroll through these quickly. Take a look. You can see, indeed, we have 68 entries. Now I just go to the draw screen. I have to hit one button and it will output a winner. So quick drum roll. Three, two, one. Al Dunn. Al Dunn, congratulations, my friend. You are the winner of the Montana Mongoose Vice giveaway. I will send you an email, so check for that. If you don't see one, send me an email. I will get this thing in the mail to you tomorrow, probably. So that's it, my friends. I really appreciate the support. I appreciate everything you do for me and the channel. Uh, it just means a lot to me. So y'all take care. Happy holidays. We'll see you next time.